Hi, my name is Lorraine Watry and welcome to my studio. I am a watercolor artist and I've worked with watercolor for 26 years now and I thought I would start a new series of videos where I go over different tips, tricks and techniques for working with watercolor and hopefully these short videos will help you in your journey and if you have a question or a technique that you would like to see please comment below and I will try to accommodate that in a future video. Hi, today's video is going to go over how to store your watercolor paintings. And I had a question from a viewer on how to do this and what I do for mine. And I am in a different um, uh, state than many of you might be where my um, humidity is very low and uh, I don't have to deal with that so some of this information um, may not apply to you and if you have more questions over storing your paintings I would suggest just doing a Google search and there's lots of good information out there so I will show you the methods that I use and I hope this is helpful. So the first thing that I do when I finish a watercolor uh, generally is that I will get them matted and uh, get them ready to go in a frame. Framing uh, for me is the uh, actual best way to store watercolor. Now um, depending on where you are in your journey for watercolor um, you may uh, not be ready to frame all your paintings and um, depending on how prolific you are you may also paint so much that um, either uh, you don't want to frame them all or you have to take your time framing them and you may need some more information about how to um, store them while you're waiting uh, either to frame them or just to hold on to them. So um, the first uh, painting that you're seeing here just has a mat on it and I used to use regular um, mat board but a lot of the regular mat board has acid in it and so then I switched to the museum quality mat board and that is acid free even in the core of the mat so uh, that is something to think about as you start to frame your paintings um, and can afford a little better matting that way I know that there's not going to be any acid leaching out of the mat over time onto my watercolor paper and I'm going to uh, turn the camera again and I will show you a couple of my framed paintings and talk about that a little bit. So here are a few of my framed paintings and uh, I again have used the archival uh, museum quality mat board to frame them and then I uh, either purchase frames online or I find uh, local frames and do the framing myself. And the reason I use the white mat board or slightly off-white mat board is because a lot of the shows that I enter, they uh, want uh, mats that are not going to compete with your painting in any way. And uh, so I use uh, that for that reason. And I just have gotten used to it as well. And I, I really like the clean look of the white mats. And uh, when I do my framing, I use plexiglass instead of glass because, again, if I enter a show and have to ship the painting, the shows don't want um, glass in the ship shipments. They want plexiglass in order. If something were ha to happen, the um, plexi is not going to shatter like glass might. So these are all framed with plexiglass and a variety of frames. And um, I have a backer sheet. Oh, let me see if I can pull one of these away from the wall. And I put, um, just turn it around here. So I put paper backing on the backs of my paintings and uh, use wire and D-rings to hang them and that paper backing will help uh, protect the watercolor and keep moisture and dust and things like that out of uh, the painting, off of the painting. So um, that is one of the things that if you're framing your own paintings, I encourage you to do to not leave the back open on a watercolor. It should have some kind of a paper backing to it.
And uh, if you have availability of some kind of a flat file like this one, um, that is a really good way to store your uh, paintings or your watercolor paper, mat boards, um, anything that you can um, lay flat. So unlike oils or uh, acrylics that might be on canvas, uh, watercolors um, can go in something like this that will help protect them. And uh, this is one that my husband actually brought home from a place that he worked and we redid it. It had some damage to it and uh, then we um, painted it. And so I'll just pull open one of the drawers and you can kind of see the space. So I have a variety of things in here right now. This top drawer is usually things that I am working on or that I need for a demonstration for a class or it is different um, things like tracing paper that kind of thing and then off to the side over here I have some paintings that were either demonstrations or they um, were paintings that I never finished and um, so that is one way that you can store your paintings um, and basically these are just in here without anything between them. You do need to be careful though if you're using 100% cotton paper. If you put paper in here that is not 100% cotton or that has some acid in it, over time, like this drawing, if it's not on 100% um, cotton or acid-free paper, it could um, possibly leach some of that acid onto your watercolor paper. So um, just be cognizant of that. These have been in here for many years now, um, and uh, they're, they're looking fine. Um, because I don't deal with uh, the humidity that some places have, uh, they are not um, buckling, and there's uh, once they're off the board, um, the paper can, with humidity in the air, it can kind of warp and ripple a little bit. So um, you just be aware of that. Um, and then I also did see recently that if you have it in plastic, which is just, this is a piece of plastic from some uh, packets of watercolor paper that I bought that I have them sitting in, um, that the plastic can possibly leach um, some chemicals um, onto the paper over time. And that might take many, many years. Um, but uh, it would be a good idea for me to um, possibly change this up and um, do something different with it. Um, now, if you are trying to be a little more archival about it, I will show you a method that you can um, lay uh, some tissue paper between, and so I'll go over to my art table and show you that. So this is just a, a box that I had, and I probably, if I had access to uh, like a plastic drawer or um, a plastic bin that you can put under a bed, um, I may, might use that instead of the cardboard box. Um, you need to be really careful with cardboard because it does have acid in it, and over time it can uh, leach uh, the acid onto your watercolor paper. So. This is a general idea of what you might want to do, but if I had a, 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 actually a plastic box, um, I would probably prefer that over this cardboard one. Uh, so I have, I would use the acid-free uh, tissue paper, and you can find that um, just online. If you Google acid-free tissue paper, you can find uh, a source for that. And then basically, I would just place watercolors in the box um, and then grab some tissue and uh, lay the tissue between and lay the next one in there. Now this is if you are using uh, arch or not arches but watercolor paper that is 100% uh, cotton. If you are using student grade tissue paper or tissue paper if you are using student grade watercolor paper, that paper is going to be made up of um, pulp and possibly um, other synthetic fibers. And so 
that paper is all already has um, acid in it and so that uh, paper over time will break down on its own so um, just so that you're aware if you are starting to really uh, get into doing watercolor I would recommend that you get um, professional grade watercolor paper rather than the student grade uh, so s professional grade watercolor paper is 100% cotton and again the student paper is generally wood pulp and possibly other synthetic fibers and it can break down and plus it doesn't paint the same way as um, a, a good piece of watercolor paper does. You don't get the same techniques and things with it. So I would just keep layering the, the paintings and then this would be a way that you could store it, um, close the, the lid and all of that and place it in a closet, um, a humidity, or not humidity, but a environmentally controlled um, room where it doesn't get too cold or too hot um, is a good way to store your, your paintings. The other option is to use a um, portfolio case and this is just one from a local craft store. It actually is plastic and uh, it has a zipper and the handles. And so you could uh, layer your watercolor paper or your paintings in that and then um, lay it flat somewhere. I happen to have something else in there right now, but that is another good option if you um, can't find a plastic container or a box that would address uh, where you should hang your watercolors and in general they should not be hung in a brightly lit window or on a fully uh, lit uh, wall because uh, watercolors uh, can fade over time if you are not using professional grade and uh, the paints that I use the quality is rated for 100 to 100 plus years in how long uh, certain pigments will last. And so if you're still using a student grade pigment, that would also be a suggestion to uh, look at upgrading to uh, professional grade pigments. And that will help you um, protect your watercolors and your investment of your work and, and experience and um, creation over a longer period of time. And uh, so I hope this video was helpful. And if you have a question or a technique or a tip over watercolor that you would like to see, please comment below and like and subscribe. And I hope you have a nice day. Bye.